the Win Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Pan Long, by I.E. Tomatoes. Please support the author by buying the original book on the link below. Book 9. His Fame Shakes the World, Chapter 13, Kalen's Arrival. The night descended. In Chan, the imperial capital of the O'Brien Empire, the most military powerful empire in the Yulan continent, life went on as usual. Aside from a few crowded nightlife streets, the city was calm and peaceful. East Chan Boulder Street After receiving countless carriages over the past few days, Count Wharton's manor gradually regained its usual calm as well. Within Count Wharton's halls, Linley, housekeeper Harry, Hillman, Barker and his brothers, Zassler, and the other co-members of the team were in a meeting. They were discussing how to handle the Seventh Princess affair. If His Imperial Majesty really were to select Bloomer, then I will act in accordance with your plans, big bro. Wharton didn't hesitate in the slightest. Hillman nodded solemnly as well. The soldiers of the Empire are famous for their courage and fearlessness, while the Seventh Princess is located deep within the palace. If you are discovered while sneaking within. Even if you manage to slaughter your way out, no doubt there will be countless deaths. After arriving at the O'Brien Empire, Hillman had been stunned by the spirit and aura of the Empire. Marshal. The entire Empire venerated the War God, and the only deity they were shipped was the War God. This nation deeply respected powerful experts. One could easily sense that just by looking at the near-crazed reactions of those onlookers in the Colosseum. Cowards who fled from battle would be viewed with disdain by the Empire. The O'Brien Empire was located in the northern part of the Yulan continent. The entire empire was often fairly cold all year around, which had also helped the citizens of the empire in developing their endurance. Uncle Hillman, if we are to go bring out the seventh princess, we definitely won't just send a single person. Although the soldiers of the empire are very powerful, as far as I can tell, they shouldn't be able to pose a threat to us. The only potential complication is that there are saint-level experts living in the palace. The Emperor didn't have the ability to demand a saint-level expert be his personal bodyguard, but the War God would of course station saint-level experts within the palace to help defend it. The value of the items in the Imperial Treasury and various hidden treasure rooms were more important than the Emperor himself. Naturally, they would have to be protected. If someone dared to barge into the Imperial Palace to take a princess, those resident saint level. Experts might just interfere and stop them. Linley was confident in his ability to deal with saint level experts by himself, but if he was bringing an ordinary person like Nina with him, it would be tricky. Linley looked at Bibi, who was resting on his legs. Bibi. When the time comes, it will be up to you. Bibi immediately leapt to his feet, hopping onto the table. Harm. Up to me? Bibi rolled his beady little black eyes as he looked at Wharton. Little Wharton, don't worry. I, Bibi, will definitely bring your woman back to you totally unharmed. Bibi will go? Wharton was stunned. Little Wharton, don't you trust me? Bibi? Bibi raised his little head proudly, widening his eyes and staring angrily at Wharton. Wharton hurriedly shook his head. It isn't that I don't trust you. It apostrophe s. The Imperial Palace will definitely have scent level experts residing there. If they fight against each other, will Bibi really able to bring a weak person like Nina safely? Wharton. Given Bibi's level of power, bringing the seventh princess out of the Imperial Palace shouldn't be a problem. Linley had quite a bit of confidence in Bibi's abilities. Bibi's speed is the fastest I've ever seen. The fastest? 
Big bro, are you saying he's even faster than you and Olivier? Wharton said in surprise. Bibi's speed is the fastest speed I have ever seen in a magical beast. The Black Cloud Panther, hey are you, suddenly spoke up from his position lying on the ground. Black Cloud Panthers were famed for their speed. When they were at the mountain range of magical beasts, Bibi was actually only an early stage 9th rank. But even then, Bibi was already almost on par with the Black Cloud Panther. After 5 or 6 years had passed, Bibi's speed had surpassed the Black Cloud Panthers by a large margin, reaching a new, terrifying level. And now? After having reached the saint level, Bibi's speed had soared once again. Of course he is faster than Olivier. Linley laughed as he rubbed Bibi's little head. Wharton, let me tell you, Bibi's speed and defense are the greatest I have ever seen. In the past, when I was at the Ernst Institute, Bibi was still in his growing phase and had the power of a magical beast of the 7th or 8th rank. But even after being struck by the dying blow of a peak stage 9th ranked armored Razorback Quim, he still only suffered a severe wound. This was the first time Wharton had heard of this. It was the first time Zassler and the others had heard this story as well. How is that possible? They were all stunned. An armored Razorback Wim was one of the most terrifying dragon-type magical beasts. When I encountered Heiryu in the mountain range of magical beasts, Heiryu wasn't able to injure Bibi at all with his attacks. At that time, Bibi was only an early stage 9th rank. You must know that Heiryu's attacks were able to cause harm to me at that time, even though I had the defensive powers of a late stage 9th rank expert after transforming. Bibi raised his head even higher upon hearing Linley's praise, staring around himself haughtily like a victorious general. I can tell you this. Bibi's speed is definitely higher than Olivier's. What's more, even if Olivier was able to land a blow of his Sword of the Aurora on Bibi, he still probably wouldn't be able to break past Bibi's defense. Linley laughed. Bibi's fur's defensive power was simply too terrifying. The Sword of the Aurora most likely wouldn't be able to break his defense. Wharton, Hillman and the others fell silent. That unremarkable little shadow mouse Linley had acquired when he was young had grown to be so powerful. Bibi shook his head. Ha ha ha. The defense of me, Bibi, is naturally powerful. That goes without saying. However dot I'm not confident in my ability to deal with a blow from the boss's profound truths of the earth. Linley's profound truths of the earth all but ignored defense. The only thing defense would do would be to slightly weaken the strength of the vibrations as it passed through. Given Bibi's speed, bringing out the seventh princess then fleeing at high speed from the imperial palace shouldn't be a problem. Most likely, the scent level experts in the palace simply wouldn't have time to catch up. Hey hey! Boss, just entrust this issue to me. Bibi was extremely excited. He looked as though he wanted to go break the seventh princess out right now. Don't be impatient. Emperor Johan hasn't made his announcement yet with regards to who he will choose, after all. Right now, Linley was prepared for either eventuality. He wouldn't be caught off guard. Dot. Both Wharton and Bloomer spent these next few days worrying. Many of the nobles of the imperial capital were also secretly guessing which one of them would end up marrying the seventh princess. In the imperial palace. The emperor was currently in a seated meeting with a blue-haired middle-aged man. In front of them was a strategic war game board in front of them. These games were quite popular in the military, and Emperor Johan often liked to play this game as well. Your Imperial Majesty. You've raised a fine daughter. 
she's actually attracted so many suitors, including my own younger son. The blue-haired middle-aged man laughed. This blue-haired middle-aged man was the mighty imperial left premier, Judd Darrell. Judd and Johan were on extremely good terms, and in private they were as close to each other as brothers. Judd, stop teasing me. In front of Judd, Johan only addressed himself as me, not using the royal we. Just from this alone, one could tell how close the relationship was between these two men. But of course, he only did so when nobody else was present. You don't know this, but this has been a huge headache for me. Bloomer and Wharton aren't too much of an issue. Either would be a fine choice. But they're older brothers. Emperor Johann sighed. Olivier and Linley both are absolutely terrifying. Judd nodded. Indeed. I saw that astonishing battle in the air above the Colosseum as well. Olivier and Linley both revealed that they had peak stage saint level power from the very beginning. I didn't expect that the power they initially revealed was just the tip of the iceberg. They actually both had their own ultimate attacks, and Olivier even dared to challenge the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson. Johan nodded. Olivier and the monolithic sword saint competed before. Last time, Olivier lost. But despite having already competed and thus knowing exactly how powerful the monolithic sword scent is, he still dares to challenge him yet again. That means he definitely has something that is making him confident. I have a feeling that both Olivier and Linley will be people on the level of the monolithic sword saint in the future. Johan sighed. The most damnable thing is, both of these men are extremely protective of their younger brothers. Judd. You tell me. How can I not have a headache? Judd began to laugh. Then, your imperial majesty, have you made your decision yet? Judd looked at Johan. Johan nodded. I've made my decision. Who? Judd was very curious. Johan said resignedly, I admit that Linley is indeed the most brilliant person I have seen in my entire life. He is astonishing in every single aspect. But compared to him, Olivier isn't much inferior. If it weren't for other factors, I would probably choose Wharton. Then your imperial majesty, you mean to say dot you have chosen Bloomer? Judd could tell what Emperor Johan meant. Right. Johan nodded. There's nothing for it. Bloomer is, after all, the personal disciple of the War God. You should know how influential the War God is in the Empire. In addition dot over four of his fellow apprentices have come to speak with me. All of them did so for Bloomer's sake? Emperor Johan said helplessly. Four of them? Judd was shocked as well. I've heard that the personal disciples of the war god rarely get involved in matters. I didn't expect that as soon as he became a personal disciple, four other personal disciples would come out and speak on his behalf. Judd, you should know that although in principle, I have the most authority in the empire, in reality the war god is still the highest power in the land. Emperor Johan, in the end, had decided to side with the War God's College. Dot. The Imperial left Premier's manner. An astonishingly handsome young man with long, flowing blue hair was taking a casual stroll on the stone roads within his own family's estates. Whenever he saw anyone, even servants, he would smile and nod towards them. Kale and Darrell, a genius magus. In the end, his Imperial Majesty decided to choose Bloomer. Kalen shook his head and sighed. His father, Judd, deeply doted on Kalen. He had even told Kalen about this affair. Why? Why can't His Imperial Majesty consider his daughter's feelings? In his heart, 
Kalen was actually very unhappy with some of the coldly pragmatic ways in which the noble clans and the imperial clan handled affairs. In his mind, people should treat other people well. If two people were to be together, it should be because both loved each other. Emperor Johann should have considered things from Nina's standpoint. That girl Nina. Thinking back to how he and Nina had played around together when they were young, Kalen came to a decision. He immediately headed out of the left premier's manor. The only thing he said to the housekeeper when he ran into him was, I'm going out for a walk. Kalen headed straight for Count Wharton's manor on Boulder Street. Kalen had come to a decision. He had to inform Wharton of this affair. At nightfall, Wharton was still draining in his manor's training area. Next to him, Linley was meditating quietly. Just at this moment, a servant ran over. My lord, Lord Kalen of the left premier's household has arrived. Kalen? Wharton came to a halt. In his heart, Wharton actually felt very grateful to this former romantic rival of his. After all, Kalen had voluntarily given up his pursuit. If he hadn't, this affair would be even more complicated. Kalen's come? Wharton, I'll accompany you. Linley was actually quite curious about this young man who had voluntarily abandoned his pursuit as well. Linley and Wharton headed directly to the guest hall. When they saw Kalen, the first impression Linley had was that this was a person who was very amiable and easy to get along with. Wharton. Seeing Wharton, Kalen smiled, then looked at Linley. And this should be your older brother, Master Linley. I've heard of Master Linley's reputation a long time ago. Linley smiled at him as well. Kalen, please sit. Wharton was very friendly towards him. Kalen shook his head. No need. I've come today to tell you something. As soon as I have, I'll be leaving. Kalen's face grew solemn. Tell me what? Wharton said, puzzled. Kalen said resignedly, Wharton, based on the information I've received, on March 15th, his Imperial Majesty is most likely going to choose Bloomer, not you. But of course dot since it isn't March 15th yet, nothing is for sure. However, this information I have is most likely 90% accurate. Book 9 His Fame Shakes the World, Chapter 14, An Exchange Between Geniuses Wharton was stunned by this sudden news. Wharton truly wanted to be able to openly wed Nina in the Imperial capital, rather than elope with her. Kalen, is this information of yours true? Linley stared at Kalen, asking urgently. Kalen nodded solemnly. Master Linley, although His Imperial Majesty hasn't publicly proclaimed it yet, this information came from my father's conversation with His Imperial Majesty. Master Linley, I trust you can judge for yourself the authenticity of this news. Linley nodded slightly. There was no need for the Imperial Left Premier to lie to his own son. And, given Linley's spiritual energy as an Archmagus of the Ninth Rank, if Kalen were currently lying, Linley should be able to sense something. No matter what happens, we brothers would like to thank you for your assistance, Kalen. Linley said in thanks. Only now did Wharton's mind become clear again. He too said gratefully towards Kalen, Kalen, thank you for notifying us. No need to thank me. I just hope that in the future, Nina will have a happy life. All right, I need to leave. Kalen bowed slightly towards Linley and Wharton, then left. Wharton watched Kalen leave then suddenly turned towards Linley. Big bro. What should we do? Wharton's mind was in chaos. 
What should we do? Linley spoke with absolute conviction. For now, we immediately begin moving the household out of the imperial capital. Linley stared coldly in the direction of the imperial palace. We are out of options. I will immediately instruct people to speak with Yale and have him come. Right now, we'll have to use the secret channels of the Dawson conglomerate to take Rebecca, Lena, Jen, and Uncle Hillman's family members out of the imperial capital. And, ideally the Emperor must not discover that they've left. In truth, it wouldn't be too big of a deal even if the Emperor did find out. Even if Emperor Johann was suspicious of Linley, so what? Would he dare to offend Linley? He himself was not the war god, after all. And even if he dared to offend Linley. Who under his command was actually capable of dealing with Linley? That very day, Linley invited Yale over. After discussing the issue for quite some time with Yale, Yale immediately slapped his chest and promised, Third bro, don't worry about it. It's just a few people. There definitely won't be any issues. Yale then laughed. Actually, third bro. Even if the Emperor found out, he would pretend he didn't know. Linley smiled as well. He had reached the saint level. Although the status of the Emperor was very high, Linley didn't have any fear of the man. In truth, the only person Linley was afraid of was that man who was residing on War God Mountain. Still, try to avoid being discovered. Linley instructed. Dot. Although, Jen, Rebecca, and Lena were reluctant to leave, they knew that they would meet again with Linley's group later, and thus they followed the directives of the Dawson conglomerate and quietly left the Imperial capital. Actually, Linley and Wharton hadn't given up all hope yet. They hoped that on March 15th, Emperor Johann would choose Wharton at the Marshall Palace. Although the chance was very low dot it was still possible that Emperor Johann might change his mind. After all, Nina eloping with Wharton meant parting with her family. As for Wharton, he, housekeeper Harry, and Hillman had all become very comfortable and used to living in the imperial capital. Unless it was absolutely necessary, they didn't want to take the final step. Each day passed, and March 15th drew nearer as well. The streets, hotels, and restaurants of the imperial capital were once again filled with discussion regarding Wharton, Bloomer, and their older brothers. Everyone was trying to guess who would be the one to wed the Imperial Seventh Princess. The hoped for day of March 15th finally arrived. That morning, a rare snowstorm actually descended on the Imperial capital early in the morning. Even though the sun came up at 7 or 8, it was still hard to see anything farther than 10 meters away. Phew! Standing outside his manor, Wharton let out a long breath. These past few days, he had been under a lot of mental pressure. Enough. We'll know the answer today. Relax. Linley laughed, clapping Wharton on the shoulder. Wharton turned his head to look at his older brother. Looking at Linley, Wharton felt as though Linley were his strongest source of support. With Linley there, Wharton felt a sense of confidence. Right. Wharton nodded strongly. Linley and Wharton immediately got on their carriages, heading in the direction of the Imperial Palace. Because of the snowstorm, the carriages advanced very slowly. In addition, there were many carriages heading towards the Imperial Palace this day. At the gates of the Imperial Palace, one carriage after another stopped at the gates, and the various nobles exited their carriages and exchanged pleasantries with each other. Lord Olivier has arrived. Seeing Olivier and Bloom walk out of the carriage together, many of the nobles and ministers outside the gates welcomed them warmly. 
seeing the nobles and ministers walk towards him as soon as he left the carriage, Olivier couldn't help but frown. Second brother, let's go inside. Olivier didn't so much as glance at the nobles as he emitted a wave of force from his body, directly pushing aside the oncoming nobles and senior ministers, yet not harming them in the slightest. The nobles and ministers all exchanged glances. They couldn't help but be surprised. Your lordship, we've arrived. A carriage driver's voice rang out, and then Wharton and Linley exited the carriage. This time, the nobles and ministers very wisely did not try to draw too near. They just called out words of welcome at a safe distance. Linley and Wharton didn't pay too much attention to those nobles either, heading directly for the palace. Linley. Olivier came to a halt, turning his head and bidding Linley welcome. Olivier. Linley still felt a degree of respect towards a powerful rival such as Olivier. Nobody could reach such a level of power without focusing for many years on painstakingly training one's self. Linley, Wharton, Olivier, and Bloom walked forward in a line, heading towards the Marshall Palace together. Linley, that day, at the Coliseum. To be honest, I really wanted to keep fighting with you. A friendly smile appeared on Olivier's face. Oh? Then why did you give up the chance? I refuse to believe you were afraid of Hadeson, Linley said with a calm laugh. Olivier and Linley had both sensed each other's power. Although that day, they had been forced aside. By Hadeson, aside from Hadeson's power, one of the main reasons they had been forced aside was because they had not yet allowed their attacks to explode at full power. It wasn't that I was afraid of Hadeson. It was more that dot challenging Hadeson was the goal I set for myself six years ago. After mastering the obsidian sword, I absolutely must challenge him. Olivier glanced at him. At the Coliseum, I very much hope to continue to do battle with you. But this battle must come after my battle with Hadeson. I don't want to let Hadeson know the secrets to my obsidian sword technique. If I were to battle you with it, wouldn't I be exposing myself to him? A hint of a smile was on Olivier's face. I really want to see if the monolithic sword Saint Hadeson, famed for his defensive abilities, can withstand my attack. Linley nodded. In the duel between myself and the monolithic sword Saint, roughly a month from now, who do you think will win? Olivier suddenly asked. Linley paused for a moment. That day, Linley had seen the layer of flowing black energy on the obsidian sword's blade. It gave off a very strange sensation. Linley was very confident in his own adamantine heavy sword, but he wasn't necessarily confident in his ability to withstand his opponent's blow. It's possible for either you or the monolithic sword saint to win. But I think the monolithic sword saint, Hadeson, has a higher chance of winning. After all, in all these years, no saint level expert has been able to beat him. For him to be able to accomplish such a feat means that he surely has some power to rely on. Linley said impartially. Olivier nodded. Right. I admit, six years ago, when I dueled with Hadeson, he only revealed a portion of his true power. Hadeson. His power is unfathomably deep. But I am filled with confidence towards my obsidian sword as well. No matter how strong his defense is, he shouldn't be able to withstand it. Linley laughed. How could it be that this Olivier was so similar to him? He himself had that same sort of confidence in his adamantine heavy sword. What sort of attack does your obsidian sword possess? Why are you so confident in it? Linley asked curiously. Olivier laughed. My obsidian sword? Olivier looked at Linley. Pausing for a moment, he said, I can tell you this. 
You should know by now that the technique of my obsidian sword is based on my insights into the elemental laws of darkness. Linley nodded. Thus, in addition to astonishing penetrative power and attack power, my obsidian sword also possesses a spiritual attack. Olivier said directly with confidence. Spiritual attack? Linley was shocked. Darkness style magic did indeed include spirit based curses. The elemental laws of darkness included all sorts of soul related properties. But for Olivier to be able to develop a spiritual attack with his obsidian sword based on his insights into these laws was indeed astonishing. Perhaps the ordinary, physical attacks of the obsidian sword are very easy to defend against, but the assault on the spirit. Ordinary defenses are virtually useless against it. I want to see how Hadeson can block it. As Olivier spoke, a look of excitement appeared on Bloomer's face as well. Linley had to admit. The obsidian sword was indeed very terrifying. How frightening! To directly attack the spirit, Linley was amazed at the power of this technique as well. The more powerful one's spirit is, the greater the chance that they will be able to block this attack. But warriors generally do not have very powerful spiritual energy. Even saint level warriors usually don't have as much spiritual energy as an Archmagus of the ninth rank. Olivier was very confident. Warriors had far less spiritual energy than Magi of the same rank. This technique was aimed precisely at the weak point of warriors. Linley. What about the attack for your technique? Olivier asked as well. Bloomer also looked at Linley. Right now, a hint of arrogance was in Bloomer's eyes. He was certain that Linley wouldn't be able to match up to his big brother. Linley didn't try to hide anything. He said directly. My technique with the adamantine heavy sword also renders exterior defenses useless. It directly strikes against the internal organs in the opponent's body. Renders defenses useless. Olivier's face changed. Generally speaking, experts would slowly build up their spiritual energy. On the path to gaining insight into the laws, their rate of growth in spiritual energy would increase rapidly. For example, Hadeson's spiritual energy should be able to match an Archmagus of the ninth rank. But the internal organs were different. Although it was easy to train one's muscles, it was extremely hard to train the heart or the intestines. They could only absorb a little bit of elemental essence, which would slightly fortify the heart and the organs. If one's organs were destroyed, one would definitely die. Renders exterior defenses useless and strikes directly at the insides of the body. Olivier felt admiration in his heart towards Linley as well. This sort of attack was simply too bizarre, yet Linley had managed to develop it. Linley similarly felt admiration towards Olivier. The obsidian sword was able to attack someone's spirit. Dot. The nobles and ministers behind them, upon seeing Linley and Olivier chatting on seemingly amicable terms, couldn't help but feel surprised. Soon, Linley and the others arrived outside the Marshal Palace. Linley and Olivier glanced at each other, then led their younger brothers into the Marshal Palace together. Actually, even though they had described their ultimate attacks to each other, the attacks would still be very hard to defend against. Both the spirit and the internal organs were definitely vital points. This was why these two geniuses were so confident, and why they weren't afraid of telling their rival their secret. So what if I tell you? Let's see if you can do anything about it. Dot. Quite a few people were gathered in the Marshall Palace. Upon Linley and Wharton entering the palace, a palace attendant immediately walked over. Lord Linley, His Imperial Majesty has already arranged a seat for you. Please take a seat over there. Ordinary ministers had to remain standing, 
but Linley did not. Linley calmly sat down, while Olivier was also led to a seat by a palace attendant. The eyes of the various nobles and ministers in the palace were all focused on Linley and Olivier with a hint of respect and dread. Linley, who do you think His Imperial Majesty will select? Olivier chatted casually with Linley, as though those watching nobles and ministers weren't present at all. My younger brother Wharton, of course, Linley said directly. Olivier glanced at Linley. I don't think I agree. Oh, His Imperial Majesty has arrived. Linley and Olivier both looked towards the palace gates. At that moment, a number of palace attendants, the Empress, the Imperial Consorts, and seven princesses entered the palace alongside His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Johan. Thank you for listening the audiobook series by Win Pei. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and peace. Win Pei.